Hey, Nick here. Again. <laughs> I'm doing the dash chrome, and I wanted to show you guys something. A lot of you guys don't know this, but the dash chrome pieces are connected with a screw. They're not separate pieces. In other words, they're separate pieces, but they don't come out separately because they're connected with this screw. See? They go in like that. <clears throat> Let me zoom out. Yeah. And it's the same with this side. There's a screw under there as well. These two are connected with a screw. These two are connected with the screw. They come out together. They do not come out separately. If you pull them out separately, you've either broken it or that means that they were already broken. See, they should come out gently. They should come out as a pair, see? And the screw is a fine threaded Phillips screw. Uh, let me go find out the size. Okay, so, oh, crap. They're an 832, number 832 threads per inch, okay? And that's the correct screw, if I'm not mistaken. And also, the same with this one. Fine thread, 832. Goes there, see? Fine thread, not sheet metal screws. If you take yours apart and there's sheet metal screws in it, then somebody's put it together wrong. Also, see these little points, these little studs? They go into these holes. Okay, they help align it. Okay, I'm having difficulty doing that with one hand, but oh, okay, that one's in. That one's in. Okay, so there. It's in, same thing on the other side. It's got the alignment studs, it's got the screw holding the two pieces together. Okay, now, the dash facing, it's what I call the dash facing, goes over this, covers this, right? And those, the dash facing is held down into these screw holes with count, black countersunk screws, okay? not chrome screws. I have some of those. If I can get my foot out of here, I'll show you what they look like. These. Little black countersunk screws. They're a little dome headed. They're not flat on top. See those? All the way around, black, not chrome for the dash facings, for these holes, okay? I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the like button, please. If you watch this, if it helped you, hit the like button. Okay, somebody asked me to do a video about lining up the steering wheel. And I thought, well, I'll do one taking it off. So I'm using this tool, steering wheel puller. Okay, now I modified it a little bit because I had to use it for something else. But there's two holes in the steering wheel, 5 16 24. They take a 5 16 24 bolt. That means a 5 16 size bolt with 24 threads per inch. Okay, uh, the nut holding the steering wheel is a 15 sixteenths. And what I did was, is, uh, I made a dedicated tool. You know, I got this at a garage sale or something. 
and I just welded the socket to this and it's just a dedicated tool now for taking that off so and that's on tight that's the problem with these they just let go like that but it's okay I think I was the one who tightened it too <laughs> this nut was on backwards I don't know if you can see this or not it's got like a little washer let me see get behind the camera it looks like it has a little washer attached to it as opposed to the other side doesn't it may look like it but it doesn't this side has like a little washer surface that goes down okay there's other nuts on the car that are like that a few places okay it goes down that's the right way to put it on I may have been the last one to, I was the last one to do it and I did it wrong. I'm not worthy. So anyway, this goes uh, like that. Let me back here, let me see. So, 5 is 24, it's gotta have a little washer on it. I need a half inch wrench. Okay, tighten that down. Now, when you put these in, when you do, when you pull the steering wheel, you put these all the way in, all the way, not two threads, because when you go to pull the steering wheel off, you'll pull the nut right out of the, right out of the threads and you'll damage it. You'll damage the steering wheel forever. I learned the hard way. I did that. I was able to save it though, because I, I only had it in a couple threads. And uh, there were still some threads left. This was, you know, decades ago, but when I was learning. And, um, you know, I've broken everything twice. going in I can feel it's not going in not even here we go okay now normally you would do these by hand the threads are a little buggered no I don't think I don't like that See, I almost stripped it. This is not going in right. Not going in right. They should go in by hand. Take that washer off for now. Yeah, it's going in crooked. This one didn't go in so well either, but it's not crooked. It's just the threads are a little bit buggered. Let me try this. Yeah, this one's... I had this off earlier, not today, but I had it off. That's straight, but it's not going... All right, I gotta tap that. 5 16 24. One of my dad's tools, He's a, he was a tool and die maker, a machinist this thing I got three of those out of his toolbox when he died I use them all the time I got a number of my dad's tools that's not going that doesn't want to go in come on here we go all right You're, when you tap, you're supposed to go back and forth. 
periodically to cut the slag off of the uh, tool, the curly cues, you know. I don't always do that, but. <sighs> Mo better. Mo better. Mo better. Okay. Don't force it. When it gets to the end, you know it. Don't force it. All right, that's nice. And that's what you have to do sometimes. I had this off a couple days ago because I was fixing the horn. I did that video. Remember I did the horn ring? I got to take this off too because it's the gap here is too. I don't know what's up. The horn ring's bent over here, I guess. Okay, so let's try this again. Put this on. Okay, now they go, see? Go all the way in by hand. Okay, all the way in. Put the tool on. Washer. I think this tool, I think I gotta back this off some more. I think that's what's wrong. Back it off. All right. I think that's what's wrong. Okay. Gives me a little bit more room. Yeah, that's what it was. Come on. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Okay. Tighten it. All right. Man. I'm sweating my balls off. Excuse my French. It's hot in here. It's like at 90 degrees outside and I got the fans on and everything and it's just really hot. Wah. Okay, so. This is a steering wheel puller. I've got both of these down tight, right? I've got this centered. Okay, gotta be careful not to damage the steering wheel. Okay, it should pop, right? It'll just pop. Man, everything's tight, man. This is why you get the suckers down in the hole. Boy. Okay, there it goes. See, it just kind of popped. All right, it's off now. Well, that took a lot. Usually they're not that difficult. They just come off pretty easily, usually. This one's being a pain. Take that off, take that off. Remember, all the way down in the hole, as far as it'll go. You know, it should go, look at it, you can see the how it went in a half an inch. You can see the threads are silver right there as opposed to gold from wearing. Okay, steering wheel, off, okay, now. Let me get a little, uh, I'm gonna get a little brush and white and brush that off. Now, been around a while. 
I've been to a few T-Bird rodeos, okay? So, you know, that's a metaphor. I wasn't really at a T-Bird rodeo. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's an alignment line. What I was trying to get at earlier. Oh, look at that's bad. Oh man, now I gotta fix that. That's the upper sleeve. All right, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Let me get the camera. Okay. See that line? That's the alignment line. Every steering shaft has one. If your car doesn't have one, then somebody's been hammering on it and they made it disappear. If you hammer on it, it'll flatten it and disappear. See that line? And this is from the tool I use, that divot. Okay, that's unavoidable. Uh, every car has one. And if yours doesn't, it's been something's happened that made it go away. Now the steering wheel has an alignment mark on it too. See that? Right there. And it's... <clears throat> I'll show you that. You line the two up, okay? Okay, line the two up, <clears throat> see? And you can tell, now if yours is missing, you can tell, you know, that's the top of the steering wheel, right? When the steering wheel is centered, a little bit to the left of that crack would be the center, see? So let's say, let's say, the one on your steering wheel isn't there. Well, you know it's going to be, you know it's going to be the center of the, the top of the steering wheel if you have this straight. Now, if the one on the steering shaft is gone, you got a problem. Um, I don't know how you would, uh, I guess you'd have to get another shaft. Uh, that would mean that your shaft gave you the shaft. <laughs> and you'd have to get another one. Because I don't know how you'd line it up. I really, I don't have a jig for that. Uh, how you'd put it back without knowing where it's supposed to go, is what I mean to say. Okay, so now, what I was trying to get at earlier is that the steering wheel only goes on this way, and that's it. Now, I've heard people say, I've had customers, oh, my steering wheel wasn't straight, so I, I took it off and did this, and now it's straight. Okay, <laughs> if you want to do that, it's M-I-C-K-E-Y, right? That's not the way to straighten your steering wheel. The steering wheel is straightened at the tie rods, and it's done during an alignment, and that's the only way to straighten your steering wheel. So if you're driving down the road and it's like this, your alignment is off, period. If this is lined up properly. I've gotten cars, many cars, where the steering wheels are put on wrong. I've gotten many cars, and I put them on right, and they're way off, you know, because the alignment was based on where the steering wheel was before when it was put on wrong. So, now we got this other problem. I forgot about that. Man, what a pain in the butt. Damn it. All right, well, we got the steering wheel off. Okay, so we're going to fix this, which means the steering, the, the, the turn signal switch has to come out. The turn signal lever unscrews. You have little flats over here if you wanted to put a little tiny wrench on it to help you get it out. If it's stuck, sometimes they're stuck. Okay, see the little flats? You could do that. Then you have to go under the steering wheel under the steering column and you have to loosen the turn signal switch you have to loosen it up now it's this turn signal switch should be bundled and i show this in another video it should be in a black plastic tube bundled to the steering column with black plastic wire retainers okay 
So what you got to do is take those black plastic wire retainers off, slide the black plastic tube down. You don't need to unplug the steering, the turn signal switch, but you need to slide that protective tube down and then you can pull the switch up enough to get to the bearing and the sleeve. What's wrong with this is the sleeve is disintegrated. That supports the bearing. That's what's wrong with this. It's not the lower bearing. The lower bearing is with the shift linkage. This particular problem is the upper bearing sleeve. You can buy those at deeper dealers. Okay, so now we're going to go under the steering column and we're going to undo those, undo the, the uh, turn signal switch. So that's a five, those are held on with 5 sixteenths hex screws. Uh, the, the head of the hex screw is a 5 sixteenths wrench. You use a, or a nut driver, which is a yellow nut driver. Uh, so I'll get, I'm going to get both. I'll be right back. God, I feel like the Wicked Witch. I'm melting. I'm sweating so bad. Oh, I guess I can. Whoop. Oh, here they are. I guess I can get rid of this tool. We don't need that anymore. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah. While we're here, let me show you something else. This is the tool I use for, for putting back the ignition switch. See, it's got, I made this by hand. I got the three little notches and they fit into the little notches here. So I put it on like that and I turn it. Now I know what some of you guys are doing. Of course, I never did that myself. Bullshit. Um, you guys are uh, using a screwdriver, right? Yeah, I learned that the hard way too. Um, don't do that. You gotta have this tool. And you probably don't have it. I had to make this. See, I made it. It's a pretty crummy job, but it works. Uh, okay. Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. Nut driver. Light. Light stick. Get rid of that. Oh, man. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to go underneath the dash. So, uh, and hold the camera. <laughs> what a, what a world. Um, okay, I accidentally turned the camera off because my big fat chubby fingers are too big. Okay, so I'm gonna try to hold this um, with my left hand. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Maybe I'll do it with my right hand. So I gotta take this off. This is the black plastic wire loom retainer, this one and this one. There are three. I can't believe it. This see this car is unadulterated, even though it's it's got some issues, this car. It's really unadulterated. It hasn't been restored five times, it hasn't been butchered by bad Chevy mechanics, and uh, that's good. So um everything's pretty much where it's supposed to be. So um we can take a nut driver to this one. Let me turn that, sorry. Take a nut driver, do this one. Oh, the ground wire is broken. I gotta fix that. That goes there and you can see the electrical connector with no wire hooked to it. So that's gotta be fixed and then uh, Oh, look at that one wasn't even connected. Somebody's had that out. And then, uh, let me, uh, I'm right-handed really, so I gotta do this right-handed. Uh-oh, thunder. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> You gotta see with your fingers, man. Okay, here we go. Okay, I got it. 
See these, and listen, they got to be the little short ones. Uh, that's not a little short one because they'll dig into the shift tube. Um, okay, so we got those off, so pull them off. Be careful. Don't spread them. Just try to pull them off without spreading them as best you can because they're plastic and they're old and hardened. Now, you can heat these with a heat gun, and it kind of rejuvenates them. Isn't that the weirdest thing? You heat them up with a heat gun before you burn them, and then uh, it kind of rejuvenates them. Okay, so what I do is see here, it was, I should have showed you that. The black plastic was in pushed inside of there, so I'm pulling it out. <sighs> Let me put this down. <laughs> it's upside down. Sorry. I got about three inches, maybe, maybe less than that now. But I, I can I can move it again. And I'm just covered in sweat. God. Oh man. I should drink some water. Um, okay. The next thing we're gonna do is unscrew I like to use these long screwdrivers unscrew the, the turn signal switch what happens to these turn signal switches when they go bad is these break off the little legs they break off. That's what happens to those. Sometimes they go bad electrically, you know, they just wear out, but that's a pretty common problem, man. I've changed a million turn signal switches. Now, one of the other problems this car had, the horn wasn't working, and um, there's some debris from that, from that, what's left of that. Bush, uh, bear, bushing the sleeve. Uh, these weren't pushing down properly. Um, this one was stuck down, so the horn didn't work. So I, that's why I had the steering wheel off earlier. Um, so I had to fix that. I had to grease grease these and get them to so they went so they pushed down properly. Those are the horn buttons. They contact the bottom of the steering wheel. So those have to be clean, they have to be straight, they have to be returning all the way properly. Okay. All right, now what I do is I go under here, use the steering column as a pry bar, like that. I pry it up, I'm being gentle. I'm never forcing anything. Okay. Okay, look at that. See? Okay. All right, look at that. Now, look at this. I'll show you. Probably have to get the vacuum cleaner for this. Let me reposition oh man okay so see all the debris in there that's what's left of the sleeve there's even some debris between you can see it between the bearing and the steering column itself down there at the bottom the bearing on this shaft see the chunks that's all what's left of the sleeve all that's got to come out then the bearing has to come out. So what I do to take the bearing out, what I do is I go in the engine compartment, I disconnect the steering shaft from the steering coupler. You take the you take that bolt out that holds that side of the coupler to the steering shaft. You don't have to take the other side out holding it to the gearbox. You just take the one holding it to the steering shaft and then steering shaft will pull right out once I do that. And then I can get the bearing off of it and clean it. Show you how to do that. Okay. 
So let's get the steering coupler. I'll show you that. I got the car jacked up in the front. I got the front wheels off the ground so I can move the steering coupler. I've got a six point, sorry, sorry. I have a 12 point, seven sixteenths deep socket. 12 point means that inside the socket where it touches the bolt head, it's got 12 points there instead of six. You know, like a bolt has six sides and a six point socket has six sides inside. Well, a 12 point has 12 sides. They're good for some applications. Well, these, you can see that these bolts are 12 sided. They're 12 point bolts. See, there's the bolt holding the steering coupler to the steering shaft. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab that bolt, right? And I'm gonna take it off. I've got a very long extension. It's gotta be, I don't know, this is two and a half feet long maybe. So I can work outside of the car. Okay, so undo this. Now the steering shaft should come right out. I probably won't have to pull the bolt out. Just leave it in there, probably. Yeah. Take this, the ratchet out. The, see, here's my, uh, here's my ratchet. Okay, it's long extension, 12 point. See that? Okay, good, good tool to have, 7 16 12 point, okay. So then, that shaft should pull right out if it's not stuck in the coupler. Look at that. Okay. Pulled right out. Now, I got a couple choices. There's a plastic boot around the steering shaft inside the engine compartment. Let me put this back on. There's a white plastic dust boot. Now, in case you guys don't know that, a lot of people don't know what that's for. It's a white plastic dust boot. Looks like a little pyramid. It's on the bottom of the steering shaft. Dust boot. Keep bugs and dust from coming in. Okay? So, we need a snap ring pliers. Snap ring, right? Right there. I don't know if I'm gonna probably, I'm probably gonna have to pull this all the way out. That's not gonna come off there without some, without prying it off. These, these bearings are usually kind of seized to the shaft and you gotta put them on a workbench and kind of tap around them with a hammer to tap. I don't mean beat, uh, to just loosen them up and get them off. Man, the sweat's going in my eyes. Oh, man. Uh, let me get a snap ring pliers. All right, so here we go. Snap ring pliers. See? Okay, there's the snap ring. <clears throat> Let's see, he's on there. Okay, I took the boot off. Okay, see, got it out. We're gonna take that bearing off, right? Can you guys see okay? Yeah, there. All right. Okay. Fragments are coming out from that sleeve. It's coming. It's 
no lead. There it goes. Okay. Clean that out. Here it is. So, look at these fragments right there, right here, from the sleeve. Oh, look at it. It's all plugged up. Let me see if I can get, uh, let me, um, let me zoom in on that. Okay. See, look at that. It's all plugged up there. Okay, it's probably all, oh, it doesn't even turn. Oh, man, it's seized. So, I don't have to buy a new one. I can clean this. Never buy a new one. These don't turn at high speed. They never go bad. They just get plugged up with dirt. So never buy a new one. You have to, all you need is a sleeve. You do not need a new bush, a bearing. Okay? I'm going to clean this and I'll come back. Okay, so I got this cleaned up. Look at this. Look at that. Look at how freely that turns. I cleaned it in the solvent tank. I blew it off a couple times with carburetor cleaner, and then I blew it with the uh, air gun, the air hose, you know, and I made it spin real fast and uh, got all the debris out of it. I can look through it and see that there's no, you can look through it and see there's no debris left in there, right? It spins freely. Okay, works perfectly. Here's a, look at, this is from my old stock in LA, still in the bag. That's over 12, 13 years old. It's still good. This, they probably make them differently now. Yeah, this is nice and pliable and this is the sleeve for the bushing, bearing. This is the sleeve for the bearing. It goes around the bearing. They're hard to get on with this particular type of sleeve. Man, I forgot how hard these were to do. They got those nubs, you know? They got those nubs on there. Go around the camera. Yeah. That helps to hold them in place though. Uh-oh, there he is. Fat Panda. Dun, dun, dun. What are you doing? Food, that's what he's doing. Hi, kitty. Hi. Hi, kitty. Yeah. He wants to eat. That's all he wants. Just wants food. Killed a rabbit the other day, killed a baby rabbit. What a butthead, man. Ate half of it. All right, anyway, that's a, so we got that on there, right? The sleeve is on the bearing, okay? Now you see how this, the bearing has this black kind of a seal or a shield on one side and not the other? That side goes down towards the engine, down towards the, yeah. This is up towards you, the steering wheel, okay? Now, we want to clean this. We want to clean the steering shaft. Get off of there. Take a wire, one of these metal toothbrushes, you know? Clean all the dirt off of it. That's pretty nice. Right? Okay. And then... Before we put this back in, you always want to make sure the threads are okay. These are the teeth for the steering wheel. And then the, there's the alignment mark. So, Okay. 
anyway. So what we're gonna have to do with this, put it in the vise. I use these, I make these from old, uh, from old, uh, the wire brushes, you know, the, tooth, the wire toothbrushes. When they wear out, I cut them off and I keep them. I keep the, sh the wood shaft, because I use them for all sorts of different things. So, that thing is, uh, yeah. Is that on? No, it's not on yet. Nope. Yeah, a little bit of wood debris got in there. Maybe I should use something else. Okay, I'll use this little drift, right? Warning, wear safety goggles. Yeah, I got some wood debris in there. Okay, don't use wood next time. Yeah, that's all the way on the other side I, I, I didn't tell you this there's another there's another uh, there's a like a a keeper on the other side to prevent it am i in the frame <laughs> yeah see to keep it from go, going that way going down the shaft so there's a keeper there so you you, you get it down to that keeper Okay. There we go. I can see it's closed. Um, white lithium grease spray. I think I'm out. Maybe I can get it. I'm going to spray some in there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at it. Yeah. Kind of try to force that in there. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. All right, enough of that. That's it. So that's good. So now we got to clean out the steering wheel column. Get the Get the vacuum cleaner. So, yeah, see, it's all dirty in there. Look at that. Look at all that crap. Bad. Okay, this is gonna be noisy. Okay, so, um, can you still see that? Yeah. Spray some uh, carburetor cleaner on this rag, right? Clean it out. Yeah, wow. Oh, man. Just pouring down sweat. It's got to drink some water.
Okay, the area where the sleeve sits, clean that out, clean this out. Get this out of the way. Okay. All right, as good as that's gonna get. Now, these things, I don't know about this one. Um, it's got a bunch of goopy stuff, grease on it. All right, this one's this one is uh, this one's stuck. If these springs are broken, it's junk. So look for that. So you got a couple choices. If those springs are broken, you could still use the turn signal switch, but you won't have a horn. So whatever sacrifice you want to make, I'm just going to put a little dab of oil. Okay. Get this out of the car. Okay, put some oil on it. Cool. Horn worked good. The horn ring works really well. Uh, that one's got like bumpy spots. I don't know what's up with that. But it's coming out all the way. This one's really smooth. This one's got bumpy spots. Okay, whatever. Now, I'm not gonna take the camera under the dash because I can't do both at the same time. I can't hold the camera and work on the car. So I'll describe to you what I'm doing. You know what I'm gonna be doing. I'm just gonna be putting that boot back on. Slide it back up, put the clamps on, that's it. All right? Put the turn signal switch back in place. Got to put the shaft in first. Give the car the shaft. Okay? Okay, there's that boot down there that I got to deal with. That boot. Cross boot. Under the... What do I do with the light? Okay, let's see what that did. All right, I got the the boots on, but I didn't. Okay, there, look. Okay, see what happened? I know that was gonna happen. The sleeve came off the bearing, okay? We gotta put that back on. Okay, then what we gotta do is We gotta coax this in with a little screwdriver. In other words, the sleeve is bigger around than the hole it's going in. So, yeah, you gotta do that. Oh, come on, don't do that. Okay. You know, I remember something now. I know how to do this. I got it started. All right, take a nut driver and a little hammer.
Okay, look at that. Look at, yeah. It's going in all the way around. Here, it needs it. Hear the sound change? Do not use a pry bar or hammer on. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's in all the way. It's in straight. Okay. Then this has got to go back on, okay, like that. And it's got to go down. Mm -hmm. Now, one other thing you got to do the horn wire. Right? Make sure the horn wire is in between the light in between the light socket and this see the horn wire has got to go in there in between you can't uh, let it get caught you can't let it get caught okay and you know that you know it's right because this plastic will sit flat down on the metal the plastic of the turn signal switch which I can see right now because if you catch that on there, you're going to short it out. Okay. Yeah. You can't see it, but you can feel it. You can feel that this is all the way down against the metal. The turn signal switch plastic body is all the way down against the metal. You can feel that. If it was, if the wire was stuck under there, it would have, it would kind of do what it's doing now, but I know it's, it's solid here. I know I screwed it down, but it's good. You have to, all I'm saying is, you got to check for that. You got to make sure that that doesn't crush the horn. I'm sorry, not the horn wire, the, the, the prindle light, the prindle light, sorry. The prindle light. Okay, what am I forgetting? Okay. Good. Okay, good. They work, right? They're returning fully. Okay. Man. I'm just pouring sweat. God. Okay. See? No more, no more loose steering wheel. Okay, now let's put that boot back on. And let's not forget to tighten the uh, coupler. Okay, tighten the coupler. Now, one of those, the, you know what, I, I know. Oh, that's right, these are right, because they have to go through the black plastic thing. So that takes up a lot of the space. These that hold the black plastic wire loom retainers underneath, um, these are correct because they go through that, they go through the retainer, so it takes up a lot of space for the screw, so they don't hit the shift tube. But on the neutral safety switch, this is the wrong screw. The neutral safety switch, the screw is half this long, and that's the correct screw for the neutral safety switch. So anyway. 
They're a different screw. Okay, I'm gonna go under there and do that. So, slide this back on. Okay, the trick is getting it in back into the steering column. You know, you try to you try to slide it up there a little bit, bury it just about like a quarter inch or something. It's not easy to do. The light. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's it, man. I got it. Oh yeah. Fix you long time. Crap. Okay. Let me get that little screwdriver and give it a little tiny nudge. That's right, man. I fix you a long time. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, first one, I guess, goes here. Uh, yeah. That one's gonna be the hardest to get to because it's uh, deeper under the dash. Here we go. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, and the ground wire, yeah. Can't forget the ground wire. There's a couple things under here that are disconnected. Somebody else must have done at some point in the past. That isn't working. All right, here we go. Okay. Yeah, the box end of these little screw of these little wrenches, they suck. Okay, there's that. Okay, number two. Put the second one on. This one. Okay. I'm going to say something and you guys are going to laugh, but I, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to find the hole for the screw. And I'm you all have dirty minds. Okay? God damn it. If there's women watching, I apologize. Men are pigs. Oh, man, my thumb. Yo. I gotta get, one of them was missing a screw, so I have to go get a screw. It's just a hex head, number 10 hex head, sheet metal screw. Okay, and the last one's gonna go here. Now that one, I need the ground wire. We gotta fix the ground wire, so uh, this has gotta go over here. Okay, so I'm gonna come out. So we need to fix the ground wire. We can just reuse this and put another end on it. Okay, so it's got to be a big end. Okay. So what we need is one of these. 7085. What does that say? STR126 terminal. We need one of these to go around. This is screwed to the bolt. 
that holds the steering column boot to the firewall. Kind of a weird place to put it, but okay, so strip it, right? Put this on, crimp it. That's it, okay? So I'm gonna get the socket for that. So minus it. Here it is. All right, half inch socket. Half inch socket, trusty extension. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter which one we put it on. The one it was on, is it way up there? Let's get this out of the way. Okay, got that off. Okay, put this on. Ow. That hurt. Ow. Ow. Right on the edge. <laughs> Let's do this. Through there. Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Steering column has to have a ground. Don't overlook that. Okay? You know, don't never never say, oh, I don't need that. They're not a Chevy. Okay? Uh, I need that screw. Okay, so one more. Um, okay, how am I going to do this? Let me see, get in here. Try not to hit my head on the uh, string column. Uh, this has got to go here like that. And then this has got to go through the wire, it has to go through here. Okay, so... Uh, Man, it's not a lot of room to work with this. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. Oh, the box end is just a piece of crap on this wrench. Ow. It's a Matco. I'm surprised. Okay. All right, the, the lower bushing on this car is good. Okay, there, that's it. All tight, everything's good. 
Slide mechanism is good. Okay. I don't. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. Hmm. Oh. The, yeah. This is the. I got to put that back in. The uh, emergency brake tube. on there and then this side man my glasses are fogging up I'm gonna need it I'm gonna need a needle nose for this one and these come in handy these long ones I use them every time I work on a car they're really great okay I'm gonna start crying in a second um, oh, that hurt too on the hoist. Uh, um, okay. All right, that's on. Okay, that's on there, right? Yeah. Now the one here. This is, uh, oh, okay, it's the one from the uh, car. Put that on, all right, that's, that's disconnected though, I think, under the dash. I can't tell, all right. Okay, now, yeah, man. Oh. I whacked my shin on this hoist leg. Uh, we're good here, right? Okay. Turn signal. We probably should test that. Make sure everything's working. Okay. Uh, I got to put the battery on. Okay, left blinker, right blinker, horn, light works, two lights, all work, good, okay, all right. Works. Okay, everything's good. The retainer is in, three screws, horn, turn signal switch down below. The boot, the boot for the turn signal switch, the retainers all hooked up. It didn't disconnect anything else, did the ground wire. Right? Now, back to the steering wheel. Okay? Isn't that where we were? Let me get sidetracked because of the the gosh darn you know okay there's the alignment mark so when you put the steering wheel on you align the two alignment marks right there there see Perfectly lined up, right? That's how you do it. You do not remove the steering wheel and turn it to line this to straighten the steering wheel. Okay? You don't do that. It's all done, the alignment is all done at the down below the wheels, the tie rods. Then the nut, okay, the washer part of the nut goes down 
I was the last one to put that on, so I put it on wrong. I'm a loser. Okay. Get the... Here it is. The socket. Okay, that works still. Oh, yeah. And then I got to take the horn ring back off. Okay, good. That's it. Done. No more play. Starting to hail, I think. Or just rain. Big drops. I can hear it on the roof. Oh, man. Pretty nice view, huh? Yeah. Big ugly clouds. Thunder here every day when, when there's clouds like that. We have thunder and lightning every day almost. Okay. See you later. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you.